have a couple of things I need to get done in the kitchen today. So I would thought I would take you guys along. I did just make myself some fresh squeezed orange juice and super easy guys to use. You just cut your oranges in half, place them on here. Though it does have like another little insert there to like squeeze the juice. Um, super easy. So I have my fresh squeezed orange juice, but then I realized I should reuse those orange peels and I do it once in a while. I don't do it every single time because I drink fresh squeezed orange juice almost every single day. Um, so I always have a ton of orange peels, but I had this under my kitchen sink for quite some time doing its thing. It's just vinegar and orange peels. And I thought I would refill my vinegar orange cleaner. So finally taking those out and refilling this. So I wanted to just show you guys like how easy it is to kind of reuse your orange peel. So the other batch that I just used today, we will um, get rid of like the oranginess of it and then just kind of um, put them in here. So I'm just gonna reuse this cup I just did and strainer that I just did for my oranges. And I'm going to pour this in. continue with that. Let me get this in here. Oh, and I spilled some already. Maybe I will not be making more cleaner because I have a ton. This is completely filled now. All right, so maybe I won't be making some more, but all you do is take your orange peels and I'll show you like one because I can't even refill the rest of this. I still have some left over, but I don't <laughs> need four anytime soon. Just take your orange peel after you have juiced it. I like to take a fork and just scrape off kind of the inside, the like the pulp and stuff. So I'm just kind of using my fork for this. I find it easiest to use a fork. And I'm just gonna put it in here because I'm just gonna throw this out. And once you get that pretty much cleaned from the pulp, you're just going to throw it in a mason jar and then you're gonna cover that up with um, white distilled vinegar and that's it. So that's all you do with your orange peels and I let mine sit for weeks. <laughs> You could leave it for at least a week, that's the minimum, but you could leave it for much longer and then you get kind of more of like the orange scent. So however you wanna do it, but super easy to make your own orange vinegar natural cleaner. One thing you should know before you go to use your orange cleaner though, is that vinegar is not really recommended to use on quartz countertops. Um, just because over time it may dull the shininess of it. So it really depends on what kind of countertops you have. Um, but you could use them basically for everything else. Clean your mirrors with it. Um, just wipe some dust and other things. Um, your stainless steel appliances, whatever else, just kind of not your countertop. <laughs> Which I was doing for a while and my countertops are fine, but after I learned that, you don't want to use vinegar on quartz countertops. So there's that. I did want to share with you guys a couple of things or a couple of books that just came in this morning. So I got this book called Freeze Fresh. It's literally all the things you could actually freeze like produce. And there's things in here that you would have never even like known about. Like, I don't know. It's crazy. You could freeze a lot of things just like random peppers and tomatoes and I don't know I didn't actually read through this but I saw my sister have it and I was like wow this is fantastic look green beans like you could freeze so many things and this person clearly uses the super cubes that I'm always talking about because they're all in the nice shapes I have those cubes 
Yep, I will link them down below. The super cubes are great. Um, and then I also got the complete guide to pressure canning. Now the ball canning book is great. It has water bath canning, it has a section for pressure canning, it has a section for freezing, for dehydrating, but it's a little bit of everything. And I wanted something specific to pressure canning now that I have my pressure water bath canner. I have a feeling I'm going to be doing more pressure canning than water bath canning just because I can. <laughs> um, and yeah, so I got this book and I'm going to have both of these linked down below. Um, but those are some great books. Um, that I have and I have more that is listed in my Amazon storefront under the kitchen um, All the other kind of kitchen stuff that ball canning book I just mentioned is in there and a couple of like other books that I have gotten um, are all in there. So Yeah, oh and also my pressure canner and all the stuff um, That I kind of have in my kitchen. It's all listed there as well, but yeah, I just wanted to mention these couple of books. I am not going to start doing my cooking and stuff yet. I'm going to do that a little bit later. Actually, maybe I'll make my garlic honey kind of mixture because I was sick this past week and I was trying some stuff out from my other book that says Be Your, Be Your Own Doctor. It, that's what it's called. And I was trying out some other stuff, including, let me show you, this mixture right here. And this is a mixture of apple cider vinegar, cayenne, um, and water, and salt. It doesn't taste good at all. I was struggling to take a tablespoon of this every so often, um, and I always had to wash it down with a cookie afterwards. So there was that, but I did try it out. Um, and it helps for like a little bit, but I had to like, you had to keep taking it for me to not like feel my throat. So that was a challenge. Somebody else said that they include honey in it, um, which I tried at my sister's house, just apple cider vinegar and honey shots. Still gross, but a lot better with the honey. <laughs> um, anyway, so that because I was sick, somebody had messaged me and they actually sent me like a garlic honey kind of recipe that I was like, ooh, I would like to actually make this. It's called fermented honey garlic. We know honey has so many great benefits. It's even good for our throats when our throat hurts. Garlic has so many health benefits. So combine them two together and that's what I wanted to do. And you could use this um, on top of like meat and stuff too. Like you could put it on top of a steak. It's just honey garlic infused. Um, so you don't have to just eat it straight up, which is probably what I'm going to end up doing next time I'm sick. But uh, you can use it for just like so many different things. It doesn't have to be just to eat straight up. Again, you could just put it onto some steak, some chicken, whatever you would use, some sweetener and some garlic on. So I'm gonna look up that recipe and I would like to make some of that. All right guys, so I'm about to use a lot of honey for this project, but it's gonna be good. And people also said you could also use it in like um, salad dressing and whatnot. So we're gonna use a lot of honey for this and quite a bit of garlic. So I'm also gonna be using these like fermenting lids because I have them and I have fermenting weights to kind of keep the garlic submerged in the honey. You don't have to use this, there are other methods and I'm just kind of trying this out even though every other method says kind of to like burp it and whatnot, but um, I'm doing it this way because like I said, I have it. So I'm gonna take some garlic and I want basically a cup of garlic. But in order to help this infuse into the honey, I am gonna poke some holes into it. Into my garlic so it could infuse kind of faster. And I'll just give you like better results that way. And obviously you wanna peel your garlic if you don't have it peeled. Now it did say you wanna use the freshest garlic possible. Mine is not the freshest garlic. Um, I've had this sitting in my fridge for a little while now, <laughs> just waiting for me to kind of process it and turn it into garlic cubes that we do use often because I hate peeling garlic. So um, what I've been doing lately is buying like the peeled garlic from Costco and I split it with my sister and then we just kind of 
freeze it into cubes and then we have garlic whenever we want to use it. Um, so that's what I have here, but it's been in my fridge for a little while because I haven't had a chance to like <laughs> process it yet and make some garlic cubes. All right, so that's about one cup of garlic, or I'm sorry, that's a half a cup of garlic. I need one cup of garlic, so I'm gonna keep going. And definitely check out the link. I'm gonna link it down below for you guys, but check out the link. You can see the many uses this has and also all of the health benefits. All right, so I'm gonna put this in here, and then I just need one cup of honey. So I'm gonna take my honey, and this is half a cup and you want to use raw honey something that's not pasteurized otherwise it's not going to ferment properly all right Okay, now that I made my counters all sticky and my whole entire jar, that's fun. If you guys know me, you guys know I hate sticky things. <laughs> like it doesn't bother me to like play with sourdough and get my hands all messy and I know that like sticks to my hands, but I don't know, other things that aren't cleaned up and they're sticky just bothers me like Maybe somebody spilled something on the floor and they only wiped it up with like a dry paper towel and it was like a sticky thing and then I go there and I step in it. It bothers me if it's sticky. Um, maybe somebody used dirty fingers on like opening up the um, fridge and that bothers me if it's sticky. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and mix this. Just, I should have used that same fork but now I'm going to grab another one. I just want to make sure all my garlic is kind of coated with the honey. Alright, so I am going to put down my weight, kind of keep my garlic under there, put this on, and then this also. And I'm just going to keep it in a cool, dark place and let it do its thing. And you want to use this after a week, but ideally after a month. So normally I mince my garlic in the food processor because uh, it's just usually quick and easy and like large amounts, but I didn't feel like taking that out. So we're gonna try this cheese shredder thing today to do my garlic instead and see how that works out. I mean, they're definitely bigger pieces and not as small, but it's working. Okay guys, so that's what I do with my garlic. I'm gonna go ahead and freeze it and then once that's frozen, I just put them in little Ziploc baggies and kind of have them ready to go. My little garlic cubes are about like three garlic cloves in a cube. Um, feel free to, if you don't have a cube thing like this, which I just got from TJ Maxx, but feel free if you don't wanna play around with this like I am doing to kind of get everything in there, you could just put this onto like a baking sheet, some parchment paper, lay it out kind of flat into like a block. Then you could cut up pieces. I've seen people take these and make them into little pucks. You could do that. My sister freezes them in larger like ice cube kind of things and then she just cuts it off as she needs it and they're super like easy to cut too. I just happen to like mine in these little <laughs> garlic cubes but there's so many different ways you can just freeze um, the garlic and that's what I do because who wants to be peeling garlic all the time? I like to just have a cube ready to go to dump in with dinner and it's just that much faster. I'm just making myself a dinner real quick before I start doing things in the kitchen. My throat hurts a little bit, so I thought it'd be good to get, I don't know, maybe some food in my mouth. <laughs> um, anyway, I got my rice here made and cooked in bone broth. I have my peppers that I made yesterday with peppers from my garden and then some 
onions. Babe had um, sausage and peppers yesterday on like a sourdough hot dog bun. And I just like to eat this over rice with ground turkey. So I also cooked up a bunch of ground turkey and we could have this throughout the week for, we could either have like turkey tacos um, or whatever really, just add it into any kind of meal. But I just, I love this kind of dinner. And Babe otherwise doesn't like eating peppers. So I was happy to be able to make that. So I'm gonna heat this up and there's my dinner. Since I was showing you guys my dinner, would there be any interest, which I don't know when or if I would do, I mean, I, this, the idea sounds great. I just don't know like how I would do it, but is there any interest of seeing kind of like a full day's worth of like what I eat in a day kind of video? Would that be interesting? Since this is now like a cooking kind of baking channel, I feel like what I eat in a day kind of goes with that. So if that's something you guys would be interested in, let me know. All right guys, so here's what I wanted to make today. Mashed potatoes, so I could restock my freezer and freeze them in my super cubes, which I'm gonna have that link for that down below. But another thing I just decided I was gonna make is french fries. But they're not really cooked potatoes. You just blanch them for a little bit. But according to this freezer book, you can just do that. And she says they come out like the best french fries ever when you go to bake them. So I have this whole bag of potatoes. I thought I would just peel them all, make my mashed potatoes in my Instant Pot, and then work on blanching some and cutting them into strips to freeze potatoes and kind of make french fries. So I'm actually very excited about that because uh, normally we like soak our potatoes in advance, but like, you know what, if I could have the cut french fries already ready to go, that's a time saver. So, I'm gonna go ahead and sit down and peel all of these mushy potatoes. Why are these so soft? This is not gonna be good if all of these potatoes are mushy. And soft so I'm gonna try and peel the one well, it's not bad actually and I could definitely use it for the mashed potatoes so I'm gonna go ahead and peel this I'm not gonna be standing doing this the whole time because that just sounds like torture but I'm gonna go sit down turn off the camera and I'm just just literally gonna peel all the potatoes and I'll be right back all right guys I have all of my potatoes peeled I decided I am not going to do the potato freezer fries today. I will do that another time because I really want to be able to have those kind of like ready to go. But these don't feel like the best potatoes. So I feel like mashed is going to be the way to go with these and just to freeze that. So I'm just grabbing my Instant Pot liner here. I am going to put down a trivet at the bottom of this thing. And I am gonna put down uh, chicken broth in the bottom of that as well. Um, but I also wanna see how many kind of potatoes I end up with, um, how many pounds of potatoes um, before I start chopping. I mean, maybe I'll just do it as I chop it up. But for five pounds of potatoes, like I said, I don't know how many pounds I have, but for five pounds of potatoes, you need one cup of chicken stock. I just use bone broth from Costco in place of kind of like chicken stock. It is pretty much the same thing, but just better for you. And you could do water also. Um, so I'm gonna put this at the bottom of the trivet along with one teaspoon of salt. And we're putting this at the bottom so the potatoes are not gonna be touching that just yet. All right, so here's a teaspoon and I might need to add more depending on how many pounds of potatoes I actually have. All right, so now we're gonna put the potatoes in. Like I said, we need five pounds. So I'm gonna put this on my scale now. And as I quarter and dice up or, you know, cut out my potatoes, I'm just gonna see and look at the weight. So 
And I'm just going to cut them into semi like big pieces because I don't want them to kind of fall through the trivet. So something like this is what I'm kind of doing. So in half and then in half again. And maybe I'm just going to have five pounds. Who knows? Okay, 3.2 pounds. Oh, this is not a good potato. Or that piece, was it? But like I said, my potatoes don't be looking so hot. Which I'm very confused why. Potatoes usually last a long time, and these aren't that old. Only like a couple of weeks old from Costco, but they're just, oh, this one too. Like, what? what is this? How? How is that all up in there? So we're not going to use that one either. I'm not even going to know if I have 5 pounds at this point. 3.8, 3.9. Maybe I'll have, oh my god, this one too. What? What is happening with my potatoes? They're fine on the outside. I'm really not understanding what's happening here. Yeah, these wouldn't be good for fries. Alright, we're at 4.2. Right, this one seems okay. Just about five pounds, 4.9. All right, so I guess that's all I'm making. So the recipe now, I think I just put this on the Instant Pot. Um, I have my bone broth in there, my salt. So I'm gonna put this in the Instant Pot for, what does it say? Um, for 10 minutes and then later we don't drain it, we just kind of dump the potatoes down in the bottom and then we mash it all together with additional liquid, which is going to be milk and butter, softened butter, okay? So I'm gonna take out, you know what, let's put this in. All right, so I'm just gonna throw this in just the way it is. Well, that's how I burned my potatoes last time. I forgot to put in the trivet. I was wondering how I burnt my potatoes last time. And I guess now I know because <laughs> they, they shouldn't even be touching the bottom so they shouldn't even burn. Okay, so set that for 10 minutes and I am going to need how much butter? Eight tablespoons, which is a whole stick of butter. So I'm just going to take out a whole stick of butter and let it soften. Okay guys, here is my stick of butter. I'm just going to leave it on the counter. <laughs> Next up, I am going to make my altered recipe of the banana bread to use sourdough. So that's what I'm gonna do now um, because that was really good last time and I have a lot of bananas. I have actually four ripe bananas so I think I might try and add up, add in all four. The recipe I have that I had made said three but I think we're gonna make it four this time because I got four ripe bananas. So I'm taking one fourth cup of butter, should be softened. Mine's not, I just took it out of the fridge, so I'm just gonna stick it in the microwave for just a little bit um, to soften up. And then I'm gonna add some sugar in here. And I did make um, like the sugar amount to be less. So instead of one cup of sugar, I'm gonna do half a cup of regular sugar. And then I'm still gonna do the two tablespoons of brown sugar. Alright, I think that might be softened enough. It's starting to melt a little, but let's throw that in there. Alright, so two tablespoons. Attach this to my KitchenAid and have that mix the sugar and the butter together. that's all kind of mixed together I'm gonna add in my two eggs all right that looks good so now I'm gonna add in the rest of my ingredients literally just throw in everything else in there um, so <laughs> I'm gonna put in all my bananas. Let me get my sourdough starter too. Um, because I, that's how I modified the recipe to include some sourdough starter. All right, starting off with my starter. This is unfed sourdough starter. I just took it straight from the fridge. And I need half a cup of sourdough starter. 
throw that in there. I'm now gonna take my four super ripe bananas and we're gonna throw them in here. Oh, they're brown and spotty. All right, that doesn't look so great down there. I'm just gonna cut that part off. All right, so we still have that banana. Okay, banana number two. There's banana number three. We're gonna do it, we're gonna add in a fourth banana. Oh, this one's, ooh, this one's not looking so hot. Uh, no, we are not adding a fourth banana because that one's got green at the bottom. Nope, I don't even feel safe cutting off some of that, so no fourth banana. We're gonna go on to add in the rest of our ingredients, vanilla extract and cinnamon, got it. But I'm gonna start with some of the dry stuff first. So one fourth teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of baking soda. And I'm just doing that so I don't have to grab another um, measuring spoon after that. So one teaspoon of baking soda, not baking powder. I'm also gonna add in one cup of flour. All right, here's my one teaspoon of cinnamon. Okay, and one and a half teaspoon of the vanilla extract. Okay, so I'm gonna mix all this together. Ooh, yep, I should have put a towel over that. Guys, I forgot an ingredient. I was supposed to add in two tablespoons of sour cream, and this definitely adds the moistness to this. Pretty much done with the sour cream, too. Alexa, preheat upper oven to 350. All right guys, I think that's done. Okay, I got my loaf pan here and I'm just gonna, I don't know, should I add in some parchment paper? Maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't. I'm gonna do it. I lied guys, I'm not gonna do it because I recently lost my scissors so I can't even cut my parchment paper down this time. So I am not going to do that. I guess we're gonna use avocado oil spray. I mean, coconut would have been better, but this is what I got. And I actually, I'm just gonna uh, rub it around with my fingers because I don't want any blobs of it. I'm just gonna make sure that's all mixed and it does look good. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pour that in here. And that's Hazel ringing the bell to go outside. Hold on, Munchkin. Let me just finish this. Hi, baby. Just hold on a second, okay? All right, I'm just gonna clean this up a little because I did get flour all over the place. I've got quite a lot of dishes I gotta do, but this little Munchkin wants to go outside, so we're gonna go outside, and I'm still waiting for the oven to preheat, but when it does, I will throw in my banana bread for like 60 ish minutes i'm gonna probably put the timer on for 55 and then i'll see if i need to keep going on or not for more um but yeah because remember how the original recipe said 35 to 40 and it was not long enough yes we are gonna go outside yes we're going outside let's go outside let's go let's go outside <laughs> all right guys my oven is preheated so i'm gonna throw in my banana bread and let's hope this recipe turns out fine again. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, um, I'm not sure how long this has been done for, but it's done, guys. You're supposed to pressure release it as soon as it's done. Well, I don't know how long it's been done for, but releasing the pressure now, and then I'm gonna be adding in some milk and butter, and I'm gonna use my immersion blender to mix it all up. Or maybe my mixer, immersion blender. Uh, I think we'll use the mixer actually. All right, so the mashed potatoes are done. I need to remove that trivet, so let me actually grab um, one of my silicone oven mitts so I could kind of pull this out while dumping in the potatoes in there. Did I just miss all of that on camera? Yes, yes I did. I don't know why that moved up, but yeah, yes I missed it all up, so I uh, messed that up, so I just took that off. Um, so I got the potatoes at the bottom. What is happening here? I don't know, this is a weird angle. Okay, maybe this is the proper setting I'm supposed to be on, I'm not entirely sure. So I got everything kind of in there. Um, I heated up three quarter cup of milk I'm gonna throw that in there too and um, my butter was softening but I did stick it into the microwave a little bit longer because it wasn't soft enough and I'm gonna stick that in there also so I'm gonna go in with my hand mixer and we're gonna mix it all together and if you guys don't have a wireless hand mixer, let me tell you how fantastic it is that I don't have to plug anything in. Um, I mean, it's not fun if it dies on you in the process, but um, it is just so easy to use. And I have the wireless immersion blender also, and I just, I love it. It's a, it's a KitchenAid brand, and it's fantastic. Look how beautiful and whipped those mashed potatoes are. Yep, this is great. Guys, how nicely whipped these potatoes are. They're fantastic. So I'm about to put these into my super cubes. You guys know I like to freeze everything in these cubes. So I'm gonna throw them in. However, we are gonna have this also for dinner tomorrow. So I'm gonna save some for dinner tomorrow so I don't freeze that batch. Cause tomorrow is my actual real birthday. Today's August 25th, so tomorrow's August 26th, which is my birthday. You guys aren't gonna see this till much later, but tomorrow's my actual, like, birthday, and so I want a nice steak for dinner with some mashed potatoes, and then garlic sauteed spinach, because I don't know, but I love that meal, so <laughs> that's what we're gonna have for um, dinner tomorrow. So I'm gonna put some mashed potatoes, I think, in here, that's what we'll have, and then I will freeze the rest. And then, right after I do this, guys, and I get this uh, prepared for the freezer, I'm gonna show you guys what's waiting for me for my birthday, because it just arrived today, but I can't open it until tomorrow, but I, I know what it is, and the box says what it is, so I can't wait to um, show you guys what I got, and yeah, I'm just, I'm excited. These potatoes, look how smooth they are. Fantastic, like, oh my God. Best potatoes on the planet. All right, so the rest of these, I'm just gonna, like I said, put into these super cubes. guys that's all done mm. so good and I'm just gonna scrape out whatever little bits I have in here cuz Hazel's waiting for some 
Okay. Got a spoon for this little munchkin. Is that yummy? Yeah. You like it, huh? Alright, I'm just leaving my potatoes out to cool before I put them in the freezer and babe actually might need to put them in the freezer when he gets home because it's already 9 o'clock and by the time they cool down I might be sleeping but I thought I would plug in my hand mixer um, just because I have used it a couple of times already without charging it and I don't want it to die so I'm just going to leave it on the counter to charge. Yummy. You like green beans? <laughs> so I can't remember if I showed you guys this already, but another book that I got is this book. The Complete Dehydrator Cookbook because <laughs> my birthday present from Babe is right here. It's a dehydrator. It's a food dehydrator. And I'm just so excited to make apple chips again. Um, when I was working last year, I borrowed my sister's dehydrator. I made some sourdough starter, dehydrated some of that. But then I was just making a ton and ton, a ton of apple chips. Hazel, you were just outside, Munchkin. Um, so I made a ton of apple chips and I loved bringing them to work with me it was a great snack to have whether it's during lunch or on the train on the way home it was such a great snack hazel loved them Jaden loved them when he came over um so i love making apple chips and yes i know um costco sells apple chips yes hello baby how hi you were just outside though you pooped you peed you had fun you ran around now you had some green beans what do you want huh what um, and so, yeah, I definitely want to make apple chips. Um, but yeah, so what I, what I was saying, oh my good, ow, that's my face, baby. Um, <laughs> keep getting distracted. Um, uh, what was I saying? <laughs> uh, okay, so Costco sells apple chips, like you can buy them in a full bag, but I just want to make my homemade ones. I like them so much better. I want to be able to make all my own food and things like that. So I'll buy like the apples from Costco in bulk, but I want to make my own apple chips and I want to be able to make my own fruit leathers. And that's another great snack to have with some fruit. And I'm never going to have fruit going to waste anymore because I could just blend it up, dehydrate it, and it's going to become a nice fruit leather as a snack for later on. Because during the school year, I find that... A lot of my berries go bad before I get a chance to um, eat them up. So this is a great way I could just blend it up and dehydrate it and I'll have a snack. So I'm excited for that and that's why I got this dehydrator cookbook. Um, it's got like some recipe recipes in here but it also just tells you like how long to dehydrate things for. Um, it's kind of like a guide. Obviously I might need more, I might need less, whatever it is. but. It's a nice guide um, to be able to like dehydrate all the things <laughs> and eventually hopefully next year I could grow like some flowers um, like edible flowers that I could make some tea with and I could dehydrate them so hopefully next year I could do that and yeah just excited to dehydrate all the things <laughs> alright guys my timer is going off for the banana bread so I'm gonna go ahead and take that out it looks delicious. So much better without that crumb topping that I did last time. We didn't love the crumb topping. And it looks like it is done. So that was 55 minutes that I did. So it looks delicious. 
Oh my god, I can't wait to eat this later. Well, not even later. It's already 9.30, so probably tomorrow. <laughs> and you guys already know what that looks like. I'm pro uh, Maybe I'll hop on here tomorrow, and if I eat it, I will share it with you guys. But tomorrow's going to be a busy day because it's my birthday, and I wanted to go out for kind of like breakfast tomorrow, and then I wanted to go kayaking and mini golf and just do a bunch of things tomorrow. So... I don't even know if I'll be home to have my banana bread. But another thing I got for my birthday is this cast iron pan, which I'm very excited to use. I just need to learn how to use it. Um, I don't know how to use a cast iron pan. I've never had a cast iron pan. I know they're so much better for you than nonstick. So I really, um, that's why I asked for this also. And my friend got this for me. So yeah, slowly learning how to, do all the things. <laughs> I feel like this summer I've just been literally learning all the things between canning, more sourdough, um, learning about um, Hazel's health and dog health and nutrition and um, reading about herbs and things and now this and then dehydrating and I've just literally been learning all the things but I'm here for it. I love it um, and I'm just excited for all the videos to come because <laughs> there's going to be just a lot of um, other stuff that I'll be able to make now. All right, guys. So that is everything um, for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys in my next cooking and baking with me video. Bye.